Hello and welcome. This is Julianne with Life Edit and Design. And today we are talking about what is lifestyle design, like the basics, the core. A lot of people get confused as to what it is and how is it different from intentional living. And so today we're just going to go over really uh, the basics of what is lifestyle design. So it's just a foundation for you to grow from. So in its basic, most basic form, it's deliberately creating a life uh, that's aligned with your values, your goals, your interests. So it seems like a simple statement, right? Like, of course, I'm going to live a life according to my terms and my goals. But really, we don't. We kind of live our life according to maybe your parents' goals or what you expected or what was expected of you from society. So you have these, you kind of live in this shell that was dictated by somebody else and not necessarily what you actually designed. So lifestyle design is like waking up and going after what you want and not so much what you've been conditioned to want. Even the media, the things that you see on TV, the commercials, it's all conditioning you to want certain things. Well, when life, when you get into lifestyle design, it's not, it's kind of being more curious, seeing those kind of messages coming at you and saying, well, I'm going to be very deliberate. Do I want that in my life? So you really kind of break free of conventions, societies, traditions, and there's nothing wrong with traditions. There's nothing wrong with society, but it's, you get to pick and choose which pieces actually are part of something you want and not things that are just around you by default. So you're really going to focus on how you spend your time, your money, and your energy. And you're, you're not just kind of um, going by society saying, well, you need to have this car and work this job and have these uh, things in your house and dress this way. It's really more intentional. So it's really about designing and crafting things to be just the way you want. And just a real quick about me, uh, I am a lifestyle designer. That's what I do. It's what I love. Um, and I'm a solopreneur. I have two furry critters. And really what I want is to help people understand that they have choices, that you get to pick what you want and that what you pick matters because it's going to ripple out how happy you are, how, uh, and much you enjoy your life is going to affect all of the people around you. So I'm so committed to lifestyle designing, helping people understand they have choices and that they need to make those choices for the good of everyone and not just um, about themselves. So that's enough about me. So what are the key components of lifestyle design? So we're going to dive briefly into each one of these. Again, this is meant to be just a really uh, a broad overview. So um, number one is clarity on values and goals. We'll dive into that. Flexibility and freedom. Don't we all want that? <laughs> Flexible schedules, the freedom to do what you want. And then being very intentional. The whole way you get to design your life is by being intentional about each choice you make. And we'll talk a little bit about minimalism because that tends to come in. And a lot of people think lifestyle design and minimalism are one and the same. So we'll talk a little bit about that. And then experimentation, which is my favorite spot. So let's dive in real quick. So clarity on your values and your goals. This is so important. You have to know what you want as a person and not what other people have conditioned you to want. So you want to set your own priorities, but you want to do it really um, and with that intentionality of sitting back and saying, well, what is it that I actually want? And this took me years and years and years to even realize I wasn't doing it. I kind of had the latter, right? You do this, you do this, you do this. So you go, you know, you go to school, you go to college, then you uh, get a good job, then you get married, then you have kids, and you buy a house, like all of those things, check, 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 check. And I always thought I was doing what I was supposed to do. And it never occurred to me that I didn't have to do it that way. You can do things out of order. You can do things, you can skip steps. You don't have to do any of it. So that's the first thing is like, what do you want? And what is it important to you based on your values? So do you value um, being in a committed relationship or do you value kind of having the room to experiment and uh, look at different relationship styles and be very unconventional? Um, what does work-life balance look like to you? It, maybe it looks like instead of the 40 hour work week, we're all conditioned to expect now things, you know, with the pandemic, things have really shifted and people are starting to say, well, do I need to work 40 hours? Does it take 40 hours for you to do the things you need to do? And the chances are probably not with technology. You don't need the same amount of hours to get things done yet. We're conditioned to think that we need to work a 40 hour work week. So all of these things are part of the puzzle. So you really have to get clear on your values and goals. And it's not as easy as it sounds. I get that. You really have to dive deep. And that's not what this uh, quick video is about. But taking time to understand what it is that makes you tick. What are the things that you desire? And what are the things that are kind of essential to your identity, essential to who you are? So that's where you want to get the clarity on those. And these are just some of the areas of personal growth, relationships, work-life balance, and health. Those are just some of the areas you want to consider. But again, getting clear on your values. 
then it's all about the flexibility and freedom, right? Once you know what you want and why you want it, then it's how do you design your life so that you can go after the things you want? It's not all about work. It's not all about taking care of family. It's not all about managing a household. What is it that you want to do? And then how do you design your life to give you the freedom to go after that? So a lot of things now, remote work is a possibility where before I remember fighting and fighting with my bosses and it just, it was, it wasn't even in the realm of possibility. You were not allowed to remote work period. And now it's commonplace. So things change so fast. How, how is it within, you know, a couple of weeks when the pandemic first hit that the entire world shifted to remote work? I mean, that, that's just amazing because all the years I battled for it. But now you have options that we've never had before. And more and more people are finding their own path and becoming a solopreneur. And they're working different hours and they're realizing that there's more to life than just work. And there's more to life than what we've been told, which is to work all day, then come home and take care of your family. And you get to have a little bit of what's left after everybody else has been taken care of. That's not life anymore. So now it's all about that flexibility and that freedom. So how do you design your days to have that flexibility and freedom? And then we talked a bit about this, but the intentionality in your choices, like, are you choosing what you're choosing or are you letting society or media, especially media, decide what you need and what you want in your life? Like when you see all these commercials after commercials, your car commercials, like why, <laughs> why would someone think that driving a car up a water spout, you know, is like so desirable. Like I got to have that car, like the, the dumbest commercial in the world. And if you've seen that Range Rover commercial, you know what I'm talking about. It's so dumb, but society and media are trying to dictate what we choose and what we have to have. And it gets, you get so, um, bombarded that you begin to think that these are your choices because it's all you see, it's all you hear. Well, what if you don't even want to own a car now that there's so much shared uh, ride share out there? Maybe you don't need to have a car anymore. Like life changes. And are you making choices based on what you've been conditioned to choose? Or are you waking up and saying, hey, do I really want to own a car? Do I really want to have a house where I have to maintain the lawn? That was one of the choices I made. Like, no, I don't want to maintain a lawn ever. <laughs> so I live in a, a townhouse where there's an HOA that takes care of it. So you start to make those choices and they start to align with your goals. So remember, we talked about the flexibility and freedom. Well, what choices are you making and are they allowing you more flexibility and freedom or are they taking it away because of your choices? Do you have to maintain all this stuff in order to survive? And that takes away your flexibility and freedom. And that's where this comes in. So we get into minimalism and focus is people, people start to get confused. They think ideal uh, lifestyle design has it means you have to be a minimalist and it's not that it's that minimalism grows out of it because when you want that flexibility and freedom and you want to make your own choices well suddenly you realize you don't need so much stuff stuff takes energy stuff takes money stuff takes your time to maintain it so people are making different choices so yes they're buying smaller homes because there's less to take care of and there's less to spend their money on within the home they're moving into communities where maybe they're living in a condo maybe they've gone back to apartment living from a house or like me they've gone to a townhouse because they don't want to have to have so much to maintain and so minimalism comes into focus because it's easier to clean a house that has very little in it. It's easier to clean a smaller house. It's easier to fill a smaller house with just a few things and feel comfortable and you don't have to spend all this money. So minimalism kind of arose from the need to put your energy and your time and your money where you wanted and not so much on stuff that needed to be taken care of. And that's, that's the relationship between lifestyle design and minimalism. So you do not have to be a minimalist to be a lifestyle designer. That's not the, not the premise. It's just that you suddenly start to find yourself making different choices because you have different priorities. Now, you know what your values and your goals are, and you know where you want to spend your time and money. And it's not necessarily on buying stuff that society told you you needed. And then here is my favorite part. I love the experimentation and adapt adaptation. So I actually have a, a notion notebook that's just experiments, things that I'm trying out. And that's what lifestyle design is all about is trying stuff. You don't know what's going to work. You, you're making this um, kind of up as you go. And that's the beauty of it. It's that flexibility and freedom to decide, well, what is it? Do I want these things in my life? Try it out. If you don't want it, return it. Um, People, you know, there's a lot in my library. We have the library of things. There's things that you can check out now, like a metal detector, and you can even check out a Roku, a GoPro. There's all these kind of new things you can check out, see if you need it. Maybe you don't even need to own it, so you just get to use stuff. You experiment, play with it, decide if you need to own it, decide if you don't. You know, experiment. Could you go without a car? Could, how would it cost to ride around um, in an Uber and have somebody pick you up all the time? And how does that balance out versus having to own a car and maintain and pay the insurance and the gas and, and have room for it, all that? So 
these are the things you get to experiment with when you're doing lifestyle design. You're just looking at those values and priorities. It drives everything. And once you kind of know what those are, then you get to experiment and see, well, how do I want to spend my time and money? What gives me the most flexibility? What gives me the most freedom? So you can see how each one of these layers onto each other an experiment is where you, it all kind of comes together. You just try out different formulas of what works, what kind of lifestyle works for you, what kind of relationship, what kind of job. And you get to play around with different factors till you find what works for you. And the thing about um, lifestyle design is it's never done. As you start to get pieces in place, then you realize that there's now openings for new pieces and you just keep changing and adapting. And I love that because you have this absolute freedom to keep on exploring who it is, who you want to be, how your identity is going to shift and what are the, some of the things that you want in the future. So this is all great. What do you do with this now? So lifestyle design is just, you have to understand that it's a very, very unique approach, meaning unique to you. And there is no one size fits all. So again, that experimentation, you have to find out what works for you and you have to create a life that's meaningful for you and not to anybody else. And when you kind of get everything to start to line up, when your values and your goals start to line up with the way you're living, that's when you start to feel this freedom and the creativity and you'll notice your whole energy level goes up and life just gets so much more exciting. So that is lifestyle design in a nutshell. So it's having the, the um, clarity on your values and goals, and then your ability to design your life around those goals so that you have flexibility, you have freedom, and you experiment all throughout to find out what's that right mix for you. So if this was intriguing to you, as a next step, um, I have a course, a, a mini webinar called uh, Designing Your Ideal Day. And this is a great way to step into lifestyle design from a very small uh, perspective. So it's not overwhelming. You're just looking at your day. How can you live the best day possible? And get this is a free uh, webinar. You'll see it down in the uh, link below. And it's just something for you to play with and start to do that experimental phase of, huh, well, what is it I want and how would my ideal day look? and then get to play with all the pieces. So again, the link is down below and I would love to see you uh, in that free class. We'll see you later. Take care.